Of an update on this uh, Jabiru six cylinder 230 three door Jabiru. So it's come in for LCH uh, conversion, which we've pretty much completed now. So we've got our water pump here. Now, this is going to have um, this has been converted, this pump, so we can run a potentiometer here and um, a 12 volt supply here, and the pump will fire up straight away. So now we're running a, a smaller radiator but thicker in depth, chance possible. What I've done is made this cowl, put a fair bit of work into this design. Air coming along here and then it ramps down here nicely. Now if we have a look underneath, the way I've done it is, so I've made a flange there. So I'll put a rubber, a rubber flange seal on there. And the idea is that, that, that face there, that flange, will marry perfectly with the perimeter of this radiator here. I've put the radiator cap up here on an angle so that'll be perfect under the cowl and then glue that down, feather the edges, fill it, and um, repaint the cowl, it'll look really nice. Uh, anyway, I'll uh, come back with an update once she's all up and running. And the reason the plane's on a funny angle is the nose wheel has been removed because we have to repair the nose wheel as well. Um, this has been converted, this pump, so we can run a potentiometer here. Um, uh, just hang around, John, I might get you to give me a hand and get this cowl off. Um, so yeah, we've, we've put a lot of work into this cowl um, uh, it's, got, it's got quite an advanced setup, but as you see, that, that scoop's been added. We do a fiberglass mould for that scoop, it fits that cow perfectly. So the nose wheel's also been repaired, um, so there was cracks on the side of that gusset, so they've been welded. That's now going to get cleaned and repainted so it looks presentable. I'm um, very pleased with, uh, with how this has all come up, and I think it's going to look really good when it's painted. Uh, and then on the panel side of things, we've put a... Um, a Bosch water pump so that as soon as you turn the master on um, the pump will uh, start it won't worry about water that the pump will run even if it's dry it's better to um, have a pump that will run on low water than start to decide that it wants to stop the pump and keeps the, the current draw down that comes on automatically with the master so now let's pop this cowl off John that's it Let's see what we've got in here. As you can see, we've got the radiator mounted on an oblique angle. Um, we've got our water pump down there. Down there, you can see. And there's the wiring for the for the uh, potentiometer and other bits and bobs. It's all nice and neat. Uh, we've got our ignition system fitted here. See it there? And there's our, our, our pickup there. So we're very close to testing, it's got oil. What else have we done? Yeah, she's basically ready to go. So um, let's get that cowl painted up and take it outside and, um, and let's give it a run and make sure it cools as expected. The propeller on this plane has also needing repairs. So we had some delamination, some fiberglass that was flapping around here and the same on the other side. So we've got some fiberglass here and some epoxy resin and some peel ply and we're gonna, we're gonna repair that area and then sort of blend it in. But you see here, here's the same propeller and this is what can happen if you don't get that delamination in check. That's a, that's a Jabiru propeller where the whole surface of the propeller, the, the, the fiberglass has come away. And that literally happened in flight. And uh, it was very lucky not to cause you know, a serious problem. You can see what happens here, see on the back? See what happened? It's starting to come away right up to there. And that gives it a lot of strength and durability, but it's not much to use to you when it doesn't stay on. Well, we'll sort, we'll nip this one in the bud before it becomes a problem. So I've got the nose wheel in the air. So what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna paint this. So this nose wheel was removed. It had some welding repair done on this gusset here on both sides. So we'll give that a coat of paint now. That's why I've got all the mask down here. Spray some uh, 2K white on that, that'll, that'll give it a better look. And as you can see, we've got the oil cooler uh, mounted. I've uh, drilled and tapped here and, and put new bolts in. So that's nice and strong now. Uh, braided hoses with EFI fuel injection clamps. So that looks good. Then I made a little bracket here. Overflow bottle with the pickup here. So well, the idea is once the, once the system contracts, it's got the ability to draw coolant back in comes out the very top here and then down to the the drain down there and three see better there and of course the 
Bosch pump is feeding directly into the common rail. Uh, the cold water out of the radiator after it's been cooled down goes down there and into the into that curve there and into the center of the impeller. It's just been mounted on a on a bracket. The clamp around it. Ready to go. It's got the interface interface there which will have a seal around it to give it a perfect seal against the radiator nice curved entrance so yeah that's going to get hopefully I can get that finished and painted today get the nose wheel painted and we're just repairing the propeller at the moment in here and a little dust tent so I've got epoxy resin uh, weave and some peel ply on there so when we pull that off We'll give that. We'll clean that up, and hopefully we can uh, blend that in, give it a coat of clear, and it should come up good. So peel ply on the top as well. In the final stages of uh, preparing this uh, or finalising this cow for uh, for paint, and it just needs a very quick rub down, denib, and we can put the top coats on. The, the project is complete. It's ready to fly. All the temperatures are excellent. In the last few weeks we've really uh, hooked into it uh, daily and now it's finished. More fiberglass and then clear coated it, added the white tips which are under the clear so that should all hold on good and the props are uh, balanced and, and running well. And you see I've put like a little gurney flap on there as well. We got here so inside the cockpit I've added a, um, a potentiometer which controls the speed of the impeller. And the beauty of that is um, you can control the temperature um, somewhat. You don't need to, once you're flying and at speed, there's lots of airflow through that radiator. So you don't really need all that much water flow. So you can, you can dial the amps right down so that you're not drawing too much current or wasting energy. The coolant temperature gauge next to it. So when you turn the master on, the water pump comes automatically. That's, that's how I prefer to set it up. So there is no separate switch for the, the coolant pump. So when you, you'll hear the pump speed up. Where is it? Here it is. And that's flat out. All right, we're back in the workshop now with the cowl removed. So let's take a look at the installation. We've got our baffles re, uh, re cleaned up, reconditioned, and got the road painted in uh, matte black, and got our Rotec. Um, emblems on there, decals, the LCH decals, which is a nice finishing touch. Put the white tips on and then gave it a clear coat over the entire lot. So that white there is actually under the clear coat. As I said, it wasn't a full prop recondition, but we did put a bit of work into that because it was a bit unsafe. Then we static balanced it, so it's, um, it's very smooth, no problem there. As you can see underneath there, I've changed the e exit of the cowl there on the, on the bottom of the, of the uh, cowl. So I've got more opening around the nose wheel and I've put a little gurney flap there which works well and of course that's been repainted in that local area. You can see the uh, shape of the flap there, it's really good. And it really encourages the air, it creates a low pressure and helps that air come out. Well we can button it up now and I'll get in touch with the customer, he's been eagerly waiting for his plane, he's been very patient. The wait is worth it because we, we, we don't cut corners, we're very fastidious, we take our installations and our work very seriously. Put all these extra details in and uh, we really want our, our work to, to shine and be considered you know, high end. And so sometimes you have to be patient because these jobs take a little bit longer because we do put that extra effort in. So we pride ourselves on that, we really do. We, we don't rush anything, we don't we mop to thing. Everything tidy, neat and organised. If we see anything, we fix it, we contact the customer and we, we address it. But I'm very pleased with this aeroplane. I think it's going to be really good. Uh, so the idea was, uh, was using a smaller radiator here not ridiculously smaller, but a little bit smaller and a little bit thicker. So the idea is I'd put more emphasis on getting the air to flow a little bit more efficiently than I have in the past, than we have in the past. So uh, the idea was the air would go in through this scoop and then it would flare through a very carefully uh, made uh, ductwork which flared, uh, curved down at the front and curved at the back. So it, it sort of went like this, you know, the air comes in the slot at the front and then it tapers out like that and it directs directly into the radiator. So no oblique air hitting it, literally comes along there through the entrance and then flares out like that and the radiator sitting on an angle there. So you can see what I'm talking about there. So that's the, 
That's the shape of the duct as it comes off the top of the scoop and then it flares out here and then also it curves in here as well, you see. Curves in here and then I've got a seal all the way around the outside so it seals perfectly against the radiator. You can see it's already made an impression here around the outside. So it's absolutely zero air leaks and as you can see it curves beautifully into it. And with that higher efficiency you can afford to run a smaller radiator which is exactly what we've done here. And so far in the testing I've done which have included significant um, sessions of wide open power, the temperatures are excellent, um, not even climbing high at all. So once you get in the air, that's going to improve even more. And I think that combined with the, the gurney flap on the lower cowl to let that air out is really helping a lot. I think it's a good setup. So um, yeah, it's all done. So um, that's how the cowl works. So I'll, I'll try and retain that in the future because I think that's a really good setup. Plus it also allows us to retain the original oil cooler uh, which is still on the cowl there, um, in there, you see. Uh, there's the original oil cooler in there. You can see it there. So that's all good. Anyway, that's how the cowl works. We've just completed the liquid cooling on. Um, so let's fire it up. Now uh, turn the master on, It'll, you'll listen for the pump fire up. I've got it set in the middle, which will be fine for start up. Right, you can hear the pump whirling. It's important to make sure that you, before you start the engine and things get noisy, that you identify that the pump has started. So we'll just set it in the midway there, that'll be fine. And as you can see, there are no temperatures. The, the engine has not started this morning. So there's no temperature whatsoever. So let's see how it fires up. Now this has got an EMAG on the left-hand side. And uh, let's see how it goes. So let's pull our choke out. No problems, make sure the throttle's closed. Pop some brakes on. That should do it. I've got a chock on the front wheel as well, just in case. Right, throttle, throttle closed. Chokes on. Mag's hot. Clear prop. And there we go. That easy. All right, a bit of a quick update. I uh, decided the weather was pretty good here today. At, uh, just at the end of the day here, the wind calmed down to zero and um, no traffic in the area. So nice and mild, it's about 22 degrees right now, I'd say, something like that. It's quite mild. Anyway, so I decided to take the plane up for a quick spin, customs aircraft after a significant LCH install. Uh, I've been doing plenty of ground runs and even some taxi taxi work. And so I thought, ah, oh, bugger it, just uh, take her up for a quick buzz. I really wanted to know how that um, scoop was going to pan out. It was good on the ground, but I really wanted to see what it was like in the air. And sure enough, um, that gurney flap down the bottom there with a slightly bigger opening, along with, uh, with the uh, converging duct in there, that's nailed it. Absolutely perfect. Must have been about 65 degrees Celsius. I mean, I didn't push it flat out the whole time, but on climb out I did, and I did a few circuits. So I did a few climbs, uh, wide open throttle. And uh, yeah, plant performed flawlessly. Props nice and smooth, um, not out of balance, nice and smooth. No issues there after refinishing it, fixing up some of the, the delamination on it. But the cooling was good, the water was good, oil was good. Um, so yeah, looking great. Um, the pump worked flawlessly. In fact, I did some experiments. I took some footage in um, flight. So see, I might insert that here. Rather that pesky hose clamp on the back of this um, air hose, or the pressurised hose for the um, cabin heat. It just I put a little machine piece in there and I clamp that, and all you do to undo the cowl is just take that O-ring off there and just pop it in. So no hose clamps, all oh, the hose clamp just stays on. All right, I think we're just about a wrap, isn't it?